Oops. There's the math teacher schedule, in case you want to know where any math teacher is at any given period. Important information. Uh, but here's what we want to look at. The homework from page 103, uh, 79. We'll jump straight to the hard one, see if I can do it. Oh, well, no wonder you have a question about that. We didn't we didn't really do a good job talking about those. So that whole section there, describe the x values at which f is differentiable. So were all of those assigned? Yeah. So 75, let's do all of those together real quick. So 75, I think you know the answer. Where, let's kind of answer the opposite question. Where can I not take a derivative on number 75? x equals 3. Why not? There's no function there. Like The derivative is the slope at a point, but if the point's not there, then there's nothing to... So at x equals 3, there's no derivative for 75. So I guess the official answer then would be all real numbers except for 3. All right, good. 77 is one that we did not talk about. Any guesses on where you couldn't take a derivative? <laughs> Calc chat said. Did um did Calc chat say why it you can't take? It said it was like a sharp turn. Okay, a sharp turn. Think about a derivative is the slope of a tangent line, and so if we try to put a tangent line on that, it would be really difficult because it's a really it's a sharp point. So there's no there's no place to put. You know, like up here. It's really easy to place a tangent line along along that curve in number 75. And on 77, most of the places it's pretty easy to place a tangent line. But when you get to that x equals negative 4, it's a sharp point. So there's no way to lay a tangent line on there. So because it's a, a cusp is the technical mathy word that we'll use, but a sharp turn works just as well, there's no derivative at, at negative 4. 79 is, is kind of more like um, 75. Like where the function is there, you can take a derivative. Um, but where the function is not there, obviously I can't take a derivative at 0 or negative 7 because there's no function there. So good question. We definitely did not discuss that yesterday. So cusps. The function's got to be there. There can't be a cusp. Oh, and the other place that is not a derivative is if it's a vertical tangent line. So even at x equals 1, the function's there. This is not the best one to demonstrate this, but... So a, a tangent line would be right there, straight up and down. What's the slope? So back to Algebra 1. What's the slope of a straight up and down line? Undefined. Undefined. Well, the slope of a tangent line and the derivative mean the same thing. So if the slope is undefined because it's straight up and down, then the derivative is undefined. Because the slope of a tangent line and the derivative, that's pretty much the same thing. So that those three questions were especially picked because they show the three ways that a derivative doesn't exist. If, if the function's not there, then you can't take a derivative. If there's a sharp point, you can't take a derivative. And then maybe the trickiest one is if there's a, a vertical tangent line whose slope is undefined, then there's not a derivative there either. Um, so I did that graphically, and I just realized that's probably not how they meant you to do the problem. If you took the derivative of 79, well, how would you know to use 1? If you took the derivative, you would end up with um, 2, so 1 over 2 times square root of x minus 1. I used a shortcut rule there that you don't really know yet. Uh, well, you kind of know. 
x minus 1 to the 1 half. So 1 half x minus 1 to the negative 1 half. All that to say is if x equals 1, then it would make the bottom 0. And if the bottom is 0, then you're undefined at x equals 1. f prime is undefined, which means the slope is vertical, so there's no derivative there, even though there's a tangent line there. That's why that's a tricky one, because there, the other two, there was just no tangent line. For 79, there's a tangent line, but its slope is undefined, so we say the derivative is undefined as well. I feel like they, they sort of jumped the gun on, on where we want to talk about that, but we can sort of get there. What other questions from 103? Okay. Oh yeah, 73 is is yuck. Um, let's do 71, and then I'll talk about 73. Because 71, we can actually do the process and figure out that it doesn't work. 73, I can't really do the process because of the absolute value bars there. So we'll do both, but I want to start with 71. It's hard not to use the shortcut once you know the shortcut. Um, so I need f of 6 because I'm, I'm using the the alternate form. So there's what it would look like. I have f of x. I need f of 6. Oh, well, that turns out to be OK. Because if I plug in 6, I get 0 to the 2 thirds, which is just 0. So limit as x approaches 6 of x minus 6 to the 2 thirds over x minus 6. Right, because f of x is x minus 6 to the 2 thirds. I guess if I wanted to put minus 0 out there, I could sort of emphasize that I've, I've plugged in f of 6 equals 0. Say, so fraction reducing here, or reducing with exponents. So we subtract and put it where the larger exponent was, right? Like x to the x squared over x to the fifth is 1 over x cubed. It's that kind of thing, except that it's with fractions. So 1 minus 2 thirds is 1 third. And if I plug in 6, I get 1 over 0. And that would be undefined. And it's not 0 over 0. 0 over 0 means maybe I could do something. 1 over 0 means I'm stuck. That's undefined. So the derivative at 6 is undefined. And graphically, we could see why that is. If we took a look at a graph of that. So let's do x minus 6 to the 2 thirds and see what that looks like, especially what it looks like at 6. OK, so it's one of those. Let's see. Let's just zoom in over here. So when we hit x equals 6, it's a sharp point. And so that sort of matches up with you can't take the derivative at a cusp 
and we have a undefined derivative. So the, that sort of hopefully makes sense of the, the picture as well as the equation for 71. Seventy-three. Um, I guess we could try the. Let's use the formula and see what we get. So, f prime at negative seven is the limit as x approaches negative seven f of x minus f of c all over x minus c limit as x approaches negative 7 absolute value of x plus 7 okay hold that thought yes this is a short answer um, so the question was, can I just know already that there's a... So you have to be careful. There is a, a cusp at negative 7. So at negative 7, this isn't going to work. But you're jumping the gun on me. But you're absolutely right. I'm going to go it the long way, and then I was going to do the Andrew way there. Uh, f of c is 0 over x minus negative 7. Oh, and look what we're taking the limit of. This is the function we're supposed to know what that graph looks like. Well, that's the one that looks like that. And so as x approaches negative 7, that doesn't exist. So that's sort of the, the formal way using the method of this section to know that that derivative doesn't exist. But... Andrew's way is really better because if we know what this graph looks like, okay, so this was the picture of the derivative, but we want the picture of the original. We know what an absolute value graph looks like. Move left seven. So yeah, there's a cusp at negative seven. So f prime is undefined. Either, either approach is okay. If you look at that and you're like, oh, that didn't have a derivative at the point or at the, at the v, then you can do that. You, you can't just, just say undefined. You've got to give me some explanation so I know what you're talking about. That's fine. If you go through kind of the process of this unit, you would do this way. But if you know what the picture looks like, you can head that way. So this way is quicker, but you've got to know what the picture looks like. Connor? Yes, yes. So anywhere else, this thing has a derivative. In fact, the derivative everywhere over there is equal to what? What's the slope of that part of the line? One. one. And the derivative over here anywhere, negative, negative one. Uh, by the way, that sort of matches up with our graph of derivative down here. Slope is negative one over here. Slope is one over there. 1, negative 1. So it is important. You can't say you can't say absolute value doesn't have a derivative. That's not true. You have to be specific. The absolute value doesn't have a derivative where it has the cusp. Everywhere else, there is a derivative. The derivative isn't changing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, careful. Negative six would be right there. Yeah, and that's fine. If you know the shape of a graph and it's simple enough for you to pick the slope off the graph, that is your derivative. That is completely okay. Okay. Anything else on 73? 
69 this is the square root of the absolute value of x at c equals 0. So I want the derivative at 0, which means the limit as x approaches 0, f of x minus f of 0 over x minus 0. Limit as x approaches 0, f of x, or I guess it's g of x in this case, square root of the absolute value. If I plug in 0, I get 0. Hmm. Let's see, if I plug in 0, so direct substitution is not working, I get 0 over 0. But 0 over 0 might have something we can do. Um, yeah, that absolute value thing is is annoying. This would be one where if we knew what the graph looked like, it'd be nice. If x is positive, I know what the graph of the square root looks like. So that one's that one's no big deal. If x is negative. x is negative. Oh, the absolute value makes it positive, and then I'm allowed to take the square root. So it looks like, like that. <laughs> it's like, oh, how did you know that? And so there's a cusp at, at x equals 0. Therefore, there's no derivative at x equals 0. But that's much easier to see from the graph than it is to see from that equation. Yeah, it would do the it would do the left and right stuff. That would be the long way around. You're not going to get one that that's, that's that bad on the test. How would you graph this? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I could just plug it in and see if we really want to know what the graph of that looks like. Square root. Oops. Square root of the absolute value of x divided by x. Oh, and I'm looking at a, a weird window here. So, zoom standard. So that graph looks like something like that. That's what we said f prime was. And sure enough, at 0, there's no derivative there. Everywhere else, there's a derivative. Right? Everywhere else, we could draw a tangent line. Everywhere else, it's defined, but not at 0. Well, let's be careful here. This gets very important later on. This is the graph of f of x. This is the graph of f prime. Yes. Yeah. There we get we do like three or four days much later where we look at the two graphs and try to figure out, you know, how to go back and forth between the two and what does this tell me versus what does this tell me and how do they how do they kind of match up? That's that's a ways away. Um so I would say not sixty nine. Now seventy three I would not do it the formula way. I would do it, I know what this graph looks like way. And there's a cusp at negative 7, so there's a problem at negative 7. Uh, 71, that one was straightforward enough. That one worked out where that one was okay. So 69, I wouldn't worry about. The others, though, I think you can, you can reason through.
Okay, I, I mean, I guess this is good. All your questions were on the tricky ones. The straightforward ones, hopefully we're okay. All right, let's look at 